And how's it going guys? We have the pleasure of going into another tutorial with VFX master Nick Koo. It is still creative week and boy do we have some stuff planned for you today. This week he is committed to one VFX tutorial every single day, which is crazy. Today, Nick's gonna be showing you how to create this crazy pixelated text tutorial. But first, of course, we're gonna talk about Envato Elements. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning, they also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty-free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you will automatically get a free first month. You'll see that coupon for the free first month at the very, very end after you've finished signing up. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. Nick, the floor is yours. Thanks, Josh. Welcome back to the Ulafemi channel. My name is Nick. Today, we are gonna look at this a uh, pixel arcade retro look that were that I did in a previous tutorial that I didn't explain how to do, but I will explain right now. We're even going to look at how to do the graphics. It's quite straightforward to actually apply the effect itself. Um, I might actually go through that first for people who just want to know that section. And for those who just want to stick around, um, I'll actually show you how to create the title uh, towards the end of the tutorial. So we'll just jump straight into it. Now, if you just want to follow along, I've actually uh, included the project file along with this tutorial for you to follow along with. And uh, you'll be able to basically, uh, you know, do the tutorial with me. So I hope that helps you guys a lot. You will need Adobe CC 2019 to 2020 to do this tutorial. So I apologize in advance if you're not over the, able to open the project otherwise, but let's get started. All right. So first I'm just going to take you through the actual title itself. So the title itself is already created. So this is what the title looks like. If you just want to skip this section, you're fine, but this is what the title looks like. This is all just created with shape layers and um, basically uh, text. So it's very quite, it's quite straightforward, but we'll go through that soon. Now, what we're going to do is just drag this into a new composition. And so this is just what it looks like straight on. Now, to get the glow effect, it's quite straightforward. All we have to do is go to the effects and we'll type in glow into the effects preset. And under stylize, we've got the glow preset. Now, I'm under the 8-bit uh, in 8-bit. You can go to 32-bit to get a very intense kind of look, but I feel it's very uncontrollable at this at at 32-bit. So we're going to keep it at 8-bit, or you can even keep it at 16 if you like to give you a little bit of extra uh, color space there. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to increase the glow radius just a touch, and we're just going to bring down the glow intensity just a little bit because it is just a little bit, just a teeny bit too hot for my liking. Now, we're just going to duplicate that again. And I just press uh, control, uh, control D or command D for those on a Mac. And we're just going to bring the glow radius down a little bit and maybe just the, maybe even just the threshold, just a touch down. Um, just so we've got a little bit of a glow on there. So there you can kind of see that's the glow effect that we've got going. Um, and it's pretty, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, all right, now let's go back to the top here. Now, what we're going to do now is add the pixel effect. So we're going to go to CC ball action. Uh, there we go. I'm going to drag that on. Now, right away, you're going to be able to see exactly what it does. Now, if you're not sure, <laughs> it basically turns all the pixels into little balls. Now, it doesn't look so obvious here in the corners here, but they are like tiny little balls. Haha. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we'll just increase the decrease the ball size till we get to something kind of like that looks a bit more decent. Um, I'm actually going to move this effect just above the glow layer because I feel like the glow would come off, uh, would come after. So um, that looks a little bit better. Now it's very unreadable. So we're going to decrease the grid spacing to two. So it's a little bit more easy and that's a little bit easier to read and that looks a bit more uh, readable. We're going to increase the ball size a little bit more. Um, there we go. That's looking a bit better. And now we're getting, we're getting much and pretty much that is the look almost. Now, if you want to kind of see if you can get more out of it, you can muck around with the glow radius on your glow layers to see if you can make it look a little bit more retro. Um, but ultimately that is it. That is essentially how you get this effect going. And it's pretty straightforward. I told you it wasn't going to take very long. 
Now, for those who want to stick around and learn how to do the actual tile itself, I will show you because quite frankly, maybe that's what you came here to see. So let's jump straight into the title and um, let's have a look. So to create this title is a few little different elements here. So we've got the stroke across, we've got the triangle, and we've just got the words and the blinking text here. So let's kind of break down those components. So first we're going to tackle looking at this first bit of text here, the Olafemi coming on. So let's create a new tutorial. Uh, sorry, let's create a new comp and we'll call this title two or three. We'll call it three because I've already done this twice. All right, so let's type our title in. Ooh, Le Femi in your favorite font. I'm going to center it. Um, we're going to center it to the middle. So feel free to press Command or Control Home and just bring it to the middle. If I spot that right, yeah. Um, now, if you have, it's mine center aligned, so that just means that when I do scale it up, it will cent scale from the center, so feel free to just get it in the center however you can. All right, that is great. Now, we're going to go to the pen tool, which is right here, and we're going to pick our favorite color. Um, look, I'm very partial to teal. Um, I think it's a nice color. Um, this sort of aqua, this tealy color. Um, I do have a very particular color palette, but just in case you wanted to see. So we're just going to draw a line from here to here. Again, if you've already seen me do uh, this, I apologize, but you know, just, just for everybody else who is here and they haven't done this or they've never seen this trick before, I'm going to do this right here. We're going to pull this just so it's about equidistant on either side. Um, yeah, right now, I'm going to go to the contents and then go to uh, shape and then go transform and we're going to skew this, turn the skew on to 30%. And there you go. We're going to have that little nice skew which is kind of cool. Now what we're going to do is add a trim path and here we go. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set a keyframe here at zero and set a keyframe there. And now we're going to go to around, uh, we'll say around one and a half seconds and we're going to make this 100. All right. And that is kind of boring. So what we're going to do is we're going to muck around with the end key point. Now don't be scared. I'm going to jump into the graph editor and that is not too big a deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to graph editor, which is this little graph thing here. Um, we're going to actually turn the easy ease on on this. So let's go right click and then go keyframe assistant, easy ease. And so now you can kind of see this will look a little bit better actually, because you can kind of see it slows down towards the end, which is not bad. I actually think that's a bit slow. I might make that just a touch faster. Here we go. Maybe around the one second mark. I don't know why I made it past one second. When is my transition ever more than one second? I don't really know. Anyway, so let's have a look at that. Now let's turn the graph editor on uh, with that property selected. And here we go. So here is our little bezier pull handle here. We want to make it so, look, it looks pretty, it's almost flat here, which is kind of boring. We want to make it feel a little bit more curvy. So here we go. We're going to pull this handle out and we're going to pull this all the way here and watch this. Yeah, that looks looking a bit nice. So look at that gradual slowdown towards the end. That's looking noise, as we say in Australia, noise. I don't know if you guys have um, Kath and Kim in, in America, but yeah, you know, noise. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this shape now that we've just created and use it as a, an alpha mat on top of the text. So we're going to double, we're going to duplicate that and we're going to pull that on top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch the text layer to the map we just created on top to alpha mat 2 and what should happen is the text will wipe on with it now i like things to not be in sync generally speaking unless that's what you want but for interest i like to offset things a little bit so look i'm going to grab this lower uh shaped layer and i'm just going to move it over just a touch and so it's going to look like the words wipe on before the text after the text comes on all right, so that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to create a second one and uh, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to press Command D or Control D and we're going to make this a slightly different color. We're going to make it more a magenta, magenta kind of color. This is one of my other favorite colors I like to use. Uh, now, as you can see, it kind of wipes over the top because you know, it's doing exactly the same thing, but just in a different color. So what I'm going to do actually is make it so that it comes around halfway. So what we can do is we are going to go to where the trim properties are for this one. And we've already got the keyframe set. So it's going to come on at the same time. However, we're just going to reduce the value to around 
And so there you go. You can kind of see it's coming on around there. So we can see that it, it sort of does this little transition where it comes around halfway. Now that is okay. I think it actually we could do a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is gonna do the offset thing again. Um, we're gonna move this over just a couple of frames and just to make it, give it a bit more visual interest. And there you go. All right, not bad, not bad. All right, now we've done that. Let's bring up the triangle. Now, here we go. We're gonna to go to this new shape. So we've got the shape layers up here, rectangle, rounded rectangle, tool, uh, ellipse, polygon tool, and the star tool. Now I'm actually going to go, you actually can use the polygon tool actually, now that I think about it. I was gonna use the star tool, but you can use the polygon tool. Now, it already set here for, it's already set here for the triangle, but it might not be. I mean, you might get a square, you might get a, a, a different kind of shape. And what I realized too, is while you're dragging the shape out, watch this. If you press the up and down keys on your, on your keyboard, watch this, you can actually increase the number of sides you have on your thing before you release, before you release uh, your mouse cursor. So I'm dragging this out, just so you understand, dragging this out, then I'm pressing up and down to actually increase the sides. You can also press left and right if you want things to be rounder or not so round or even inversely round. Anyway, you get the idea. So we just want a triangle, so that's good for me. Uh, I'm gonna hold down shift so it just sort of plonks itself in a nice equal position and we're gonna let go. And that is set. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to position this in the center. So what I'm gonna do is press, press uh, Option, Command, Home, or Control, Alt, Home for those on a PC. And, and then we're gonna press Command, Home. So that just reset the anchor point to the center of the object. object. And now we're gonna press Command or Control, Home, and we're gonna bring it down to the middle. Now it's a little bit too big. So I'm just gonna shrink down the size of the stroke, which is uh, what we were doing before. And I'm also going to shrink down the actual size of the triangle itself. And we're going to pull that below uh, our layer so we can actually see it. It's a little bit off center, actually. When you do auto center this thing, it actually doesn't really center because I feel like it should be around here somewhere. I don't know why it doesn't quite center to the middle, but I guess it's just the mass thing anyway. All right, we're going to do exactly the same thing we do with the stroke. We're going to put a trim layer on it as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we go, trim path. Um, we're going to trim the layers. So we're going to set an out and we're going to set an in. And what we're going to do here is we're going to make the first one zero. And here we go. We've got a first one here like that. Now, again, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to the graph editor and we're going to select the convex convert vex tool. And we're going to make this nice and smooth so that it comes on in a nice way. Now, one thing we're going to change here is that we're actually not going to finish the path. Um, so we're going to make it around, mm, we'll say 80. So it doesn't quite finish the path. And why is that? Well, I'm going to solo this layer so you can see. We're going to basically put a, a right now, I want this to actually kind of move around uh, the, the triangle, try tracing the path. So what we're going to do here is because it's not finished off, we've got a little bit of a gap that we can see. So if we put an expression on the offset, we're going to press option or uh, alt and uh, we're going to click the little stopwatch here and we're going to type in the expression time and then 100. All right, and here we go. And this is what you're going to get. So there you go. Where well, you've got this little triangle that's just tracing itself around, which is great. All right. Now, we want to do that again. Again, I'm going to duplicate this one more time. And we're going to change the color of it to something else. So we're going to change it to this. And now we're going to see if we can change this just a little bit so it fills in some of the gaps in our hole. So I'm just going to change this to say 50. So it actually does uh, gives a little bit more space. And there you go. That's pretty much it. We've got a little bit more of a variation, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can vary the expression that's on here if you want it to be slightly offset in a different direction or even the speed itself. So if you wanted to say change this offset number to something else, say for example, my, we'll say, you know, you can even make it go the other way, so minus 100, for example, it'll actually start tracing in the other direction. So you actually see two competing lines facing against each other, which is kind of cool. We might leave it for this version right now. All right, now we're gonna do little triangle particles that actually come off the edge of the screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just make our little triangle particle and we're just gonna drop the, the, the stroke down to like 10. Now that is very big. Uh, I'm gonna do that trick where we're going to recenter the objects. So option command or option control, uh, option alt, sorry, home. 
Option command, sorry, let me get this right. Option command home or alt or alt control home should get you to recenter the object. And you could actually manually do it. Actually, I think in this case, it might actually be easy to manually do it. Now we're going to scale it down and we're just going to set this one here. Now, because it's on blue, I'm going to set it to a different color. So it's a bit easy to see. So we're going to make it, we're going to both, both make them magenta. So we're going to see, if we can find where the end of this transaction occurs here with the so I reckon around here is where we want the particles to start appearing. So I'm actually going to move this to only appear here and we're going to set this around here and we're going to press P and we're going to bring the positioning and we're going to make this come out really fast. Zoom out like this. And we're also going to set a position for the rotation. So we're going to press uh, shift R and shift T for the perpacity. I'm going to set keyframes on both of them. And now, we're also going to, we're going to make the opacity zero and we're just going to make this flip around maybe, I don't know, three times. And so here we go and kind of see. All right. So I think the opacity is a little bit too, comes off a little bit too early. So we'll just set it a bit later. So boom, there we go. All right. So we're going to do something fun. We're going to also make sure that we set the opacity, uh, set the uh, values on this to be a little bit more smooth. So um, before we even do that, go to the separate dimensions because you're not going to access the Bezier curves unless those uh, dimensions are separated in the positioning, but everything else should be fine. So we're going to go into the curves editor again. Now here you can kind of see if we, if we can grab the little curve here, it's not been too difficult. We can actually, don't be difficult. All right, here we go. We grab the Bezier curve and bring it here. Um, this is the one for the, this is the positioning one. So this is the Y axis. This is the X axis. Uh, here's the one for the rotation. So we need to go up here and get the convert vec effects vertex tool. And we're going to select that and we're going to pull that out here as well. And likewise with this one, we're going to, it probably doesn't need it so much in the opacity, but we're going to do it anyway. All right. So here we go. And Oh, it really spins off really fast. Maybe, maybe we don't need it on that one. So we're going to press the option button and, uh, sorry, the command button or control button and just turn that into a regular, the rotation into a regular, um, keyframe because I think it was spinning too fast. There we go. That's not too bad. All right. Now we're going to duplicate this one more time and we're going to start, uh, change the position start frame. So we're going to grab these two. We're going to make sure you grab these two frames and we're going to move it down here. And make sure you grab these last two frames and highlight a box and draw around it and move it down here. Um, it's actually a bit wonky, isn't it? I think we need to actually change. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look like a straight path, but it actually doesn't seem to matter. So there we go. All right. So that is pretty much it for the text itself. Um, we're just going to do the last part where we have the text come up and um, thanks for watching the tutorial. I'm going to put that. I'm going to use our centering technique again and bring it to the middle and bring it around here. You could use the align tools, but I find that's a little bit faster. Now what we're going to do is draw a little mask here. It doesn't matter what color it is because you're not going to see it. Just make sure the stroke is not on. So you're able to see what you're doing. We're going to draw a little mask around a big one. I like drawing big masks because that means I can move things around. Now the shape is above this layer, just so you can see what we're doing. So uh, you can kind of see it's just above this, uh, just below this, uh, this text here. So, and then we're going to set this to alpha and you can kind of see it's there, which is great. Now we're going to just set some keyframes. So we're going to set the first keyframe around one second. So we'll press P, bring up the positioning and we're going to set the next keyframe, bring it down here and voila. Here we go. We're going to, I almost reached the motion button, which is just, well, look, this is a very handy way to basically get, um, you know, to get some easing on your positionings and it's one of my favorite tools. I'll just show you what happens when you do use it. So um, here, if you put this here and you put this on there, you can kind of see it automatically adjust the curves according to what you need to do. So that's one of my favorite tools. It's a very quick and easy function. If you ever want to go, it's not a plug. I just like that tool. Anyway, so there you go. That is it. Um, that is how you do the text. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Again, if you want to get the project file, you're welcome to just download it. I'll be sharing a lot more tutorials in the next couple of weeks, but thanks for watching. And if you want to follow my Instagram account, go for it. It's at Nick Ben Koo underscore motion and uh, hit me up. Send me some questions. I want to know what you guys are thinking. And thanks again, Josh, for letting me share. You guys got to check out Nick's video tomorrow. He's going to be showing you how to do this crazy cool circular stretched pixels effect.
please make sure to check out all the videos in this week's creative series down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I actually have two additional videos that you've got to watch. And remember to get your free month of Envato Elements by clicking the link below in the description. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.